So next up is Lee, who's going to give us a whole new meaning to the phrase, stop twisting my words. Give it up for Lee. Welcome. How's it going, Nick? Hello there. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, so one of the problems that I, when I'm doing design, I often come up with is choosing a font for a specific project. So here I am in Illustrator. I'm designing this poster for this workout called Murph. And everything is looking good, but I basically have just put some placeholder text for the title. And then I'll usually start trying to go through all the fonts on my system. Uh, then I'll go to Typekit. But maybe for certain projects, you want something completely customized. Uh, you don't want to use an existing font. So oftentimes what we do is we'll take some existing text, we'll convert this into outlines, and then start dragging around Bezier points. But anytime you start dragging around Bezier points and handles, uh, first of all, it's really time consuming. And then any changes you make to a specific letter, it's really hard to, to have that same style be applied to all the different letters. So I want to jump over to the iPad and show you an application uh, that we're prototyping. And first, I want to explain how it works. So instead of dealing with the outline of a letter, we're instead dealing with the skeleton or the thin center line, which defines the center of the letter. And here I have the letter P. And we can see those skeleton points are defined. And for each of those points, we derive two additional points on either side that controls the thickness. And when we're dealing with the skeleton, we can manipulate those skeleton points without the curves actually um, being affected. So let me jump over to the app. So this is still pretty early days. But here, we essentially have um, a skeleton font which is provided, a thin center line. And then using sliders, we can extrapolate, um, create any type of thickness that we want. We can do things like, obviously, adjusting the width if we wanted to create a condensed or, or an extended version. Um, we can make adjustments to only a certain set of characters, like if we just want to adjust characters that actually have a crossbar, we can control the crossbar. Woo! So right now, this is obviously, this is cool, this is a mono-weight font, but it's, you know, it's not that interesting. So one of the most important things in typography is contrast of the character. This is the difference between the thin and the thick strokes in the font. And that's called contrast. So if we adjust the contrast, we can see that change into a more wow. classic style font. <laughs> if I jump into the letter A here, you can see how that works. So if we adjust the contrast, only some of those contours are being affected. And we can do things like, obviously, if we wanted to create uh, an italics version. Um, one of the things this is missing for this type of, of, of font are serifs. So the serifs are actually there. We just need to slide them out. Wow. Woo! Now we have, so now we have uh, serifs here. We can control things like the curvature, about how they connect to the stems, um, and a whole bunch of different controls. So I'm going to back out here and talk for a second about effects. So let's get rid of this. So, you also sometimes want to apply some interesting effects uh, to text. So if we wanted to create a thin center line in the contours, and we can see how that takes uh, effect across the whole font, we can actually take it all the way up and then adjust the offset wow. to create some Woo! really cool shadow effects. <laughs> and also have things like deforming the path so if I actually do this jitter, it's actually going to <laughs> deform the path at different levels so we can kind of create a stroke which looks as if it's been hand drawn. Wow. Okay, so I want to focus on the problem that I defined in the beginning. So I'm going to come here, I'm going to type in uh, the title of that poster, which is Murph. And I'm going to go ahead and just increase the width, bump up the weight. Um, I might want to control the curvature, so any characters that have uh, curves can be adjusted. Maybe I want to adjust the crossbars a little bit. Uh, but this workout's named after a fallen member of the military, so I kind of want a military kind of feel to this. So I'm going to apply a stencil effect to it, where certain contours are kind of moved to give an effect like a stencil. 
So when I'm ready to export this, um, right now, you know, you can export this text as a vector, bring it in, or as a, wow. as a bitmap. Woo! Or you can, or you can actually export this as a full font, where all the characters in the font have taken these changes. And if we jump back over to Illustrator, um, I previously exported this, mm -hmm. and I just called it uh, Max Sneaks Font. So there's that actual font file uh, that came over from the iPad. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Yeah, thank you. Badass. Wow, um, that was pretty impressive. It's, it was better than any magician I've seen, and I've seen Doug Henning. <laughs> this, well, is, this is like a magic show. I'm it like, is a magic what? show. What? <laughs> <laughs> Letters. Oh. <laughs>